Welcome to ACT OUT. I'm Eleanor Goldfield, and this is your Tipping Point. Earlier this month, President Obama once again announced that he's a corporate shill, intending to drill baby drill because I guess all the blood and oil from the Gulf, either one or both, has washed off. This time he's boldly digging a hole in the Arctic, or rather, letting Shell do the actual digging. Yep, the Arctic is now open for business and Shell is slated to begin drilling off the coast of Alaska this summer. The Chukchi Sea is home to an estimated 15 billion barrels of oil. It also happens to be home to polar bears, salmon, walruses, seals, bowhead whales, loons, Pacific brant, puffins, and other animals you may not have heard of and may never hear of before they're drenched in toxic sludge. And according to science, they will be. An impact statement released by the Department of the Interior concludes that there is a 75% chance of one or more major oil spills if the Chukchi Sea is developed, and there is no way to clean or contain such a spill. No way to clean it because it's the fucking Arctic. Oil skimmers don't work on ice, and even when they do work, they only clean up a fraction of spilled oil. Remember the Gulf oil spill? Yeah, skimmers cleaned up 3% of spilled oil. And the two other common methods of quote-unquote cleaning up an oil spill are a bit like nuking a cancer patient. Cancer cells may die, but so does the person. Burning oil and releasing chemicals to break up the oil oftentimes cause more damage than the oil spill just on its own, as in 52 times more toxic in cases of chemical dispersants. Not to mention that because of the amount of ice still clinging to life while we drive our hummers off the proverbial cliff, the only time you can really initiate a cleanup would be in the brief summer months. But even then, due to wind, ice, and ocean conditions, oil spill control measures would be ineffective anywhere from 18 to 56% of the time. We just don't have the ability to clean up an Arctic oil spill. And for fuck's sake, we shouldn't have to. This outmoded, archaic, insane, suicidal, and homicidal form of extracting a dirty fuel source shouldn't even be on our radar when we have things like uh, the sun, wind, water, or at least the water that Nestle hasn't sucked out of aquifers. And if we can turn piles of shit into usable forms of energy, I say we just throw Bill O'Reilly onto a turbine and call it a fucking day. But that shit aside, literally, people are standing up against Arctic drilling, well, standing and sitting, in kayaks. Kayaktivism is the new thing in the fight against Shell and their petrol plans. Last week, hundreds of kayaks flooded Seattle Harbor, where Shell has their Arctic rigs anchored. Shell Know, a coalition of several organizations, groups, communities, and individuals organized the Shell Know Flotilla and the Paddle in Seattle event as part of a three-day protest which included music, art, teach-ins, and workshops, culminating in You Shall Not Pass, the shutdown of Shell's operations on May 18th. Here to tell us a bit more about the actions and the ongoing fight against big oil is Bill Moyer, co-founder and executive director of Backbone Campaign, and George Edwardson, vice president of Inupat Community of the Arctic Slope. Take a look. What is your direct connection to the Chuck GC? It is where my communities feed themselves from. In the Arctic, we can't farm. We can't reach cattle or anything like that because our land is too cold. And the only way we can feed ourselves and live up there is to eat what's there. And without that food, we can't stay. So what was your, uh, what was your involvement in the actions that happened on the, on the 16th and 17th and 18th? Talk a little bit about those events. I heard there was a group that was standing up to Shell Oil and their, their drilling rig they were trying to bring. And I asked to be down here because I've been standing and holding the oil industry back. I started opposing it in 1977. And at that time, it used to be American oil companies. But now today, it's only foreign corporations. Shell, the Italians, the French, the Norwegians. These are only foreign corporations that are in uh, Chuck GC. There are no American oil companies out there anymore. They, they know better. <laughs> well, you've sued them too much, apparently. Yes. <laughs> Can't help it. Got to take care of home. So, Bill, I wanted to ask you because uh, this this action was obviously very creative and very artful, and that's what Backbone Campaign does: is artful activism and creative activism. So, um, and this idea of kayak activism is new to me. Is this a new concept? Did you come up with this specifically for this event? 
Well, we didn't coin that term and it's been used actually in Palestine, believe it or not, is when I saw the first use of it. Uh, we used kayaks to scramble into construction zones and do a blockade or threaten a blockade in 2009 to protect our island from a, an industrial gravel mine that was being planned there. So we've been doing that since that time. And we continue to use and train people to use the water as a place of, uh, to engage corporations uh, and do resistance. There's a, a poet named Diane De Prima, and she has some, uh, a poem called Rant. And in that poem, she says, the only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination. The only war that matters is the war against the imagination because all other wars are subsumed by it. We're in a process of decolonizing imaginations. We all feel that like we're helpless in front of these giant corporations, but we're not. But we're, we're, we suffer under that illusion. And then on the, on the 18th as well, you were able to shut down the, the rig for the day. Um, are there more actions on the water and off the water like the 16th and the 18th planned? Well, there's a whole series of uh, tactical tools that we will deploy um, in this <clears throat> next uh, period of time. Um, the, uh, for nighttime and for daytime, as you know, that's uh, our sort of specialty. Uh, the 18th was uh, a, a day that was, you know, especially set up this festival resistance. But um, I want to also be clear that it wasn't just Backbone Campaign. And honestly, Backbone Campaign had very little to, to do except for providing imagery for the 18th. It's been a very large coalition of people and groups. Uh, I'm curious, George, because I, I wasn't aware of the, of the legal action that had taken place. Are you planning more legal action against this now that uh, this has popped up? We, we've got our minds set on it. We haven't come up with any right now. We're looking at the next move the industry might make, see what we need to do next. I am with a regional tribal government. We're federally recognized. I sat down with Obama four times the past four years, talked to him twice on the subject. Talked to all of, the, all of his directors and secretaries of the different agencies because we can do government to government. And we're a regional tribal government and our main responsibility is to take care of our members. And we're a subsistence society, so to take care of them, I need to make sure our food source is open and protected. It's something that happened in the Gulf, which is relatively friendly compared to the Arctic. Uh, if something like that was to happen, and, and I would say, how isn't it inevitable that something happens there? Yeah. That we'd be putting into jeopardy and killing all of those, uh, uh, all that life, this place that's um, this untouched and un unharmed at this point, and uh, not to mention heat up the planet further. But the, the, the idea that we would be so arrogant and so greedy to. Um, <clears throat> and we. To, when you look at the 13 nations that are connected to the Arctic Ocean, they've done a study, and in that study, they said the Arctic, the, the salmon and the bottom fish caught between Alaska and Siberia is the last third of the world's commercial fish, the last third. And you think that, I mean, because the fishing industry is a big industry, you'd think that somebody would be stepping forward to say, to fight the oil companies, but I suppose our, our dependence on, uh, our addiction to oil is higher than our addiction to fish. So um, just real quick before, I, I know that you guys are busy, but so I just wanted to wrap up real quickly. Um, is there anything planned that people should know about? Is there anything that people can tap into either online or in fact on the ground, either where you guys are or in their own communities to support what you're doing? Well, I would like to add that uh, I think that uh, if folks want to do uh, pickets, uh, shell no pickets at, at shell stations around the country, and, and let us know at shellknowflotilla.org and shellknow.org or, or send something to me, Bill, at backbonecampaign.org. Please do that. That would be great solidarity. It doesn't take very much. And, and local news stations like to have a, um, 
a, a local connection to a national story. So it's a good strategy for folks to go out and just get a shell no, uh, make a shell no poster and go do a picket and, and call the news, your local news agency. Um, <clears throat> folks in this region, uh, the Pacific Northwest, they can go to shellno.org sh or shellnoflotilla.org and, the, and they can sign up to participate in, uh, in future trainings. We should, we're getting, we're recovering from this last weekend still, but um, we'll have additional trainings up. <clears throat> People can get out on the water. We're setting up a rapid response crew. We've, we've now got a barge on the water that with solar panel uh, uh, powered stage uh, and a screen on it. And for us up north, I'll keep on opposing, keep on standing, keep on taking the federal government. And we have no choice. See, I have 70 to 80 percent unemployment in each community. And the only way these communities can feed themselves is to go out in the ocean. That is where our food chain begins and we have to protect it. You know, it comes down to some of that basic stuff that you and I have talked about before that really some things just aren't for sale. And it's we're in a paradigm battle here. And um, and I think we're on the front line of that right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Chuck Chee Sea is not for sale. Our climate's not for sale and our future's not for sale. So it's our sacred obligation to protect it for future generations. And and, and we're going to do that in solidarity mm -hmm. with George and his people and um, and all the other allies. For more information on how you can get involved in the Shell No activities, check out the link below. And the links at the end of the show, including links to Backbone Campaign and George's organization representing the rights and concerns of the native Inupat Nation.